Main cabin masters, this is where we're pouring today. This is right in Manchester, Maine. That's the slab we're doing up there. They're really growing. They, uh, this is gonna be, you know, mostly for food and entertainment up here. They'll have a band on it, they'll have a food truck on it. Main cabin masters, look them up. All right, so we're getting ready to pour a 40 by 24 slab today. It's all stamped. It's going to be 16-inch barn board stamp. We've got color in the concrete. We've got mocha brown in the concrete. So you can see the concrete's kind of brownish in color. So we're going to, we got brown in the concrete. We're going to use a deep charcoal, like a black release. And that'll be the color for today. See if we can get this coming down here. See how brown that is? Really nice dark brown. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. We got an awesome stamp concrete slab we're doing here today. We're going to show you how we get it poured, how we stamp it, how we clean it, how we, what it looks like at the very end after it's been sealed. So. Make sure you stay tuned for the whole video. Right now, we're just getting this poured. Like I said, we put the integral color in the concrete. It comes out a really cool looking color. You know, we've done we've done stamp barn board in all kinds of different colors. Probably the two most popular are this brown and then the, the gold gray we use from Butterfield Colors. So brown and gray with that charcoal release both look really, really good when you're using the, the barn board. We, Personally, we really like the barn board stamp. Out of all the stamps that we do, it has it has a really cool texture to it. The grain and the knots look look almost real to me, you know. And obviously, we're trying to make concrete look like wood here. So, I mean, we get it as close as we possibly can. But it's you know, real wood is real wood. Concrete's concrete. So, you let me know in the comments what you think. If it, if it does really look like barn board or not when we when we get done here that's the end of the first truck so now we're waiting on the second truck we know it's hot out today we know we're gonna be moving fast you know there's always a little bit of uh, e even though we're really really experienced when you get down to stamping something hot like this you know you you always want things to go well so here we go all right first trucks down there's 10 yards pretty brown what they want this is gonna they're gonna have like a they're gonna have like a food truck on here they're gonna have a concert they're gonna have a band on here they serve you know fast food 
main cabin masters. Second truck's on the way, should be here any minute. So we're just waiting for that. So we or when I ordered the trucks, I ordered the second truck 30 minutes behind the first truck because that's I knew that was going to give me a little bit of time on the first truck to get back on it and start stamping it. We wanted the set times between the two trucks just to be a little bit different. If they're the same, if the set times are the same, if the trucks show up right back to back, then you know there's a slight chance we may not get the same texture in the second truck as we got in the first truck. So having them a little bit of a part really helps us out when it comes to stamping here that's where experience comes in especially since it's you know it is like 7 30 in the morning so it's kind of cool right now but we know the temperatures are going to get up into the mid 80s it's right out in the sun so when this stuff does start to set and go off there's it's it's not hours we got to stamp it it's only minutes so we know we're going to be moving really really fast here the key is for us, you know, it doesn't really take us long to get it poured and screeded and bowl floated. So we can get it in fast and then we got plenty of time to plan for the stamping part of it. So get ready to check that out because that's coming right up. All right, so we got it all in 20 yards, 40 by 24. We got a wood plank stamp here. See that? So 16 inch barn board texture is what we're doing here. We got a, probably an hour or so before we got to get on it. We've got some bleed water we got to let dry up. We've got to get it firm enough for us. So it's probably eight o'clock in the morning right now. We'll give it, give it 30, 40 minutes, come back and check it, see if it's ready. So after about an hour and a half, this thing's ready to go. And we know because it's hot out today, the sun's out, this thing's going to go fast. And, you know, a thousand square feet of that barn board, you, you really got to be moving to be able to do a thousand square feet out in the sun. The set of stamps, you, know, you got 10 or 11 stamps. If you had two sets, if you had about 20 and you had another guy or two, then, I mean, you could do more than this. But with a thousand square feet and only 10 stamps, you know, we know that we're really going to be moving. The good thing, you know, one thing on our side is it was two different loads, and the two loads were about a half an hour apart. So the first truck, we should be able to get the first truck stamp before the second truck is, is too hard and, and we can't get a good stamp in it. Plus, on that second truck, as you can see, there's some trees back there, so there's a little bit of shade working in on that back edge. So we know that's going to help us out a two, help us out a little bit too right when we get to the end. So Luke's getting started. Darren and I are still mag floating the surface out. It's it's pretty fast, you know, when I'm on those knee boards just to get the surface all magged out. And because we poured on some styrofoam, I am dealing with a little bit of moisture on the surface. I mean, typically we like to let the bleed water all dry up off the surface before we start stamping. But, you know, when it's out in the sun, it's 85, 90 degrees and the concrete's setting up and it's ready to go when it's ready to stamp you just there's no waiting you got to get on it so i'm mag floating the surface and any little bit of bleed water that's left on there i'm just working off with my mag as i go and then after i mag it it's the surface is drying up pretty good so we're we're getting on it right now we're moving and we got a few pipes here to work around so that slows us down a little bit i talk about you know timing when to start stamping and all that how to do this all in my stamp concrete course guys so if you want to learn how to do this stuff the link is down below in the description just click on the stamp concrete course um, I all kinds of trainings in there very similar to something like we're doing right here and I'll teach you how to do this so you can get into stamping if that's what you're looking for now right now just you know I'm waiting for that last little piece down there to mag float that second truck and in the meantime you know Darren and Luke can just keep moving the timing is actually working out pretty good for us here that with the speed that they're going at versus the speed that the concrete's setting up it's kind of working out pretty good for us I'm not I'm definitely not behind back there mag floating it and they seem to be getting some pretty good texture into the surface 
just by using the weight of their bodies and their feet versus having to use a tamper. So now we're about right where that first truck ended and the second truck started. And at this time, the end of that first truck was starting to get a little firm, so we're just using a tamper on it just to make sure we get really good texture in the surface. I've got it all mag floated out by now. And we're just working our way down with the release powder. You can see Luke's throwing a little bit on there as we go. Now we're working into the shade a little bit too, as you can see in that corner. So, I mean, we don't want to get on it too, too early. We, want to, we just want to make sure the timing on everything looks the same. And there's, you know, there's, that experience comes into play here, that's for sure. I mean, I wouldn't want to tackle something this size with these stamps if I wasn't very experienced. You definitely want to start on something really small. You can see how we're just moving as a team. We'll tamp it, we'll pick up a stamp, we'll move it down. We got just enough to make about two rows here. Three or four more stamps definitely would have been a lot more convenient, but we can make this work. Using the powder that's out here in the wind is definitely a little bit of a mess. You know, the powder does leave a pretty nice antique-ish effect versus liquid release. You can use liquid release on something like this if you want, and then come back and, and do like a a teak wash the next day to get your antiquish effect. We we generally prefer the powder if we can, if it's not too messy to clean up. Um, we we do do some liquid release also though. I'll show you some of that in some upcoming videos. So I'm just using my little texture mat, getting around those last few pipes. Darren's putting in the last little bit of a tamping down on these last few stamps, and we're going to get these picked up. Then I'm going to show you how we wash this and clean it. All right, we got it all stamped. Took us probably about an hour to stamp this 40 by 24. About a thousand square feet. It's the barn board look. We've got to clean it and seal it still, but it's got all that powdered release on it. But it, it has a really cool look to it. They're cleaning off the stamps now. We always wash them up after with Dawn dish detergent, water, scrub them, power wash them. Hey, we're back at Main Cabin Masters today. We got this stamp concrete pad we did. We're washing it off. We gotta wash off all that powdered release, get it cleaned up so we can seal it. So this is the process right here. We used a mocha brown integral color in there and then a charcoal release. So it's gonna be mostly brownish with some black highlights see how the pressure washer will take off most of the release and then we we use Dawn dish detergent with water and we we dump that on we'll scrub it in We've got two pressure washers going so it should make pretty fast this is a pretty fast process here today After we scrub it with Dawn dish detergent water, this is what it looks like. It cleans off probably 80 to 90 percent of that release. And then it leaves you with the integral color. So the Dawn dish detergent really breaks up the release. It, it won't just break up with water on its own. You gotta use a some type of soap. Dawn works the best. Hey everybody, we're gonna go check out the finished building. I wanted to show you guys what this looked like at Main Cabin Master. So we're pulling into the parking lot here. Let's let these cars go by. 
That's where we're going right over there. I haven't been back since the building's been finished, so it's gonna be new to me too to see what this looks like. But we'll go check it out. Let these last two go by right here. A lot of times, you know, I don't get back to go and check out our jobs for quite a while afterwards sometimes because we're on different jobs every single day. There's the, there's the building right there on top of the stamp slab. We'll see if we can park here and get in there. Get a good picture of it. We've done quite a bit out here to the backyard, so let's, let's go check it out. They usually rock in with a band here, you know, on the weekends in the afternoon. They have, uh, that's the finished building right there. They'll have a pig roast here. They do that a lot. And this place, this place will be hopping with people this afternoon. It's kind of in the morning right now. They're just getting set up. You can see they got the fire burning in there, ready to, ready to smoke some, some meat. Um, but this, this place is hopping when it's going. And it's, the building came out really, really nice. Um, you can't see too much of the floor anymore, but... It's got a bar there, it's got the food truck there, you know, and got a restroom there. So it's it's worked out to be a really cool space. I'm gonna have to come here and, and get some food, I guess, and check out the band later on. <laughs> 